In this video, we are going to be graphing some square root functions. We will not be using our technology for this. We will do everything 100% by hand. Um, let's have a table for every graph that we do. But rather than making a table of values for the entire thing, we're going to start off with a little table of values that go with the parent function. So I'm going to make a little table of values like this. Now this table is just me graphing y equals the square root of x, just the parent function. Now Haley, what's the first x value that I always use? Zero. Zero. And what's the next x value? One. And what's the next one? Four, right? It's all about numbers that we can easily take the square root of without getting a decimal and without using a calculator. Um, give me one more. What's the, what's the next perfect square? Nine. Nine. Miss Blade, do you understand where I'm getting these x values from? Yes. And we're always going to use those same four values like over and over and over again. Okay. Um, so what are the y values going to be? 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, it's just the square root of all those x values. Now, this is the parent function, square root of x, without the plus 2 part on it. So when I go to graph these points, um, I'm just going to plot them. I call it a skeleton. I'm not going to connect the dots. So there's my 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. All right, there's my skeleton of the parent function. But I'm not going to connect the dots because the real function has this plus 2 on it. Now remember, oh. bless you. Bless you. Um, Miss Blade, what is the plus 2 going to do for us? Um, you're going to go up 2. You're going to go up 2. So for that reason, I'm going to look at each one of these skeleton points, and I'm just going to move them up 2. OK, so that's going to put that one's going to go here. That one's going to go there. Boom and boom. So you see, I just move each point up 2. And then these, I do connect the dots, because that's the final answer. All right, and we're supposed to state the domain and range, so here we go. Okay, Tyler, thought I was going to leave you alone over there. Um, can you tell me, what do you think is going to be the domain of this, uh, look at the pink function. What do you think the domain is going to be? Uh, two, or zero to infinity. There you go. You're about to say the range at first, but you, you switch it up. The domain is like x values left to right. This goes from zero to infinity, and then the range, which goes from bottom to top. Um, Haley, talk to me about the range. Um, so it's two to infinity. Sure, the range, it starts off at two, and then it goes to infinity. Is there anything else I'm asking for? Uh, graph it, state the domain and range, yeah. All right, any questions about number one? All right, I'm going to pause the video and try to do number two by yourself. All right, so on number two, this is what you should have done. Um, so we had our parent function. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9 and 3. So that was going to look like this. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. What, um, this plus 2 that's under the radical, what is it doing? That's moving us to the left 2. Were you thinking that? So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to take each one of these uh, points and I'm going to move them to the left by 2. So that's going to go here, and here, and here, 
and here. Okay. Yes. I won't count off if you don't draw the blue dots. Um, that's totally fine. Um, what's the domain going to be? No, because remember the. Mm hmm negative 2 to infinity because the domain is your left right so this goes to the left negative 2 and infinity to the right um, Miss Blade what do you think about the range? Um, would it be negative 2 to infinity or infinity? That's that would, oh no that's the domain okay so yeah, zero to infinity? Zero to infinity. Since the range is going up and down, this is the lowest point on the graph. That is a y value of zero. And then it goes up from there. So zero to infinity. Okay, any questions on number two? All right, let's see. If, let me see if number three is one you should be able to do. All right, let's do number three together. See this um, negative sign in front? That's an A value because it's a negative 1. And I was saying anytime there's an A value, let's do three columns. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a three column little chart. So my first two columns are the usual X and Y. So we're going to do the same thing we always do, 0, 0. The square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. Now, in the third column, we take the a value, which in this case is negative 1, and we multiply that by the y values. So I'm going to do negative 1 times all the y values. Negative 1 times 0 is 0, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, and negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. We're multiplying by the A value. Oh, okay. All right, all the middle value, you know, the old Y values, we're getting new Y values by multiplying by A. Okay. So once we have the new Y values, you can sort of cross out the old Y values. So we're going to be graphing 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 9, negative 3. And that, that's going to be the final answer once we've done that. So 0, 0, 1, negative 1. It's, wait, I lied. It's not going to be the final answer. Because we still won't have done the plus 1 part yet. Okay, so let me do this in a different color. Uh, so when I when I do this, I'll try to do my final answer always in pink. So so far I've got zero zero, one negative one, four negative two, and nine negative three. Okay, the only thing I have not done yet is the plus one part of it. So tell me, what does this plus 1 do for us? It's going to be to the left 1. All right, were you guys thinking that? Yeah. OK. So I'm just going to take each of these four points and move them to the left 1. And then that will be the final answer. So I'm going to be here, and here, and here, and here. Just move them all to the left one. OK. So time for the domain. 
All right, Tyler, you're up. What's going to be the domain of this pink graph? Negative 1 to infinity. Negative 1 to infinity. Okay, now I'll take a volunteer on the range. It's a little bit tricky. Um, anybody want to volunteer? Tell me what, the, what you think the range is. Jump in there. Yes, but just turn that around. Wait, why is it? The range and the domain are always read from least to greatest. Oh, and that's so for a range, that means we're doing from bottom to top. Okay. So how low does this graph go? That's your negative infinity. And then how high does it go? It reaches a maximum height of zero. and then